church orchestra bless you tonight. Yeah. Yes. How many enjoyed the choruses the Lord led to yes. tomorrow out yes. to praise them? Yes. And not a blessing. They were just a blessing. Yes. And uh, then Brother yes. Ferris and his appeal to us to give uh, as the Lord had, had given to us. And it's wonderful as we feel the hush of the Christmas season upon us and just a few days, Wednesday, in fact, the calendar day of uh, this uh, season will be here at its fullest. And um, the world will take note that Christians by the millions across the earth and even perhaps in the billion figure now, uh, I'm sure it is, that they are celebrating the Christ child and his birth into the world that dramatically changed the world. Yeah. And um, I'd like for everyone to hear me clearly tonight without restraining my voice too much. Um, are you hearing the, how, how's the sound out here right now? Me, me raised a little bit? All right, just raise it a little bit, Brother David. Uh, Tracy, our sound engineer back there. And um, uh, that way everybody can hear very good, very clearly. Um, because when we speak of Christ, we should honor him so much that every ear be tuned to the word being said. Because anything about God and Christ is so holy that we can't, certainly, certainly Christ should be exalted above Samuel, the prophet. And the book of Samuel, the scripture said that uh, God did a new thing in Israel and uh, would cause all of them that heard their ears to tingle and that none of his words would fall to the ground. None of Samuel's words. That's how precious that God valued that prophet. Well, if Samuel was held up that high, then I think that... Uh, the Christ and the word of Christ should be so exalted uh, that we wouldn't let anything even distract us yes, while we're hearing about this amazing, wonderful counselor, um, so descriptive in the Bible. In Genesis, he was the seed of the woman. He's described that way, in that, in that uh, peculiar manner in which God described his son uh, in Genesis, the third chapter, the 15th verse. Scripture said, and I, that is God, will put enmity or separation yes. uh, between, and he was addressing the serpent, and he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and uh, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, uh, but he said, uh, thou shalt bruise his heel. Um, that was the seed of the woman. Jesus was looked at as the seed of the woman. And God said, I will make a clear separation between the seed of the woman. That's Christ. Yes. He was the seed of of the Virgin Mary. He was the seed of the woman, not just any woman, but a virgin. Right. A virgin brought him forth. Yeah. Um, in the seventh chapter of Isaiah, right. and the 14th verse, I believe it is, the scripture said, uh, the king Ahaz, wasn't it? Uh, it was it's told to ask the Lord a sign. And he said, no, I, I won't ask him a sign. He said, well, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Uh, yes. The prophet did. Yes. Uh, the Lord himself will give you a sign yes. right. uh, that a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a child and his name shall be called Emmanuel, right. which being interpreted is God being with us. God being with us. See, uh, uh, he'll, this, this virgin, this I'm not a woman, not 
like the New World Translation, uh, just uses a woman, the New World Translation. The uh, New English Bible uses just a woman. Well, that's sacrilegious to the Word of God. Not just a woman brought forth Jesus. That would make him common. That would make him just like any other man. Uh, but not just a woman, uh, but a virgin. The impossibility of a virgin bringing forth a child is only in the miracle field. The miraculous. Christ was miraculous. Uh, a virgin uh, cannot conceive a child if she's a true virgin. We know that. We're adults. We understand that. Physiology of the body, the human anatomy. Um, a virgin cannot conceive a child and bring forth a child, but uh, here Isaiah is saying, Behold, the, uh, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth uh, 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 and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God being with us. Yes. So when we look at the descriptive way that God wants us to tune in in this Christmas season, and as Christians, really accentuate uh, the uh, enormity of the greatness of God. Yes. That's what God is all about, his greatness. That's why his church should never be common, and the church should never uh, strive to be just a mediocre, phlegmatic, lackadaisical uh, group of people. Uh, but uh, Christians ought to pride themselves on their houses being cleaner than other people, uh, their, their tongue being cleaner, their language being cleaner. Christians ought to pride themselves on dressing properly uh, and, um, and, and taking pride, godly pride, in the way they dress. Uh, Christians ought to pride themselves on their body being clean uh, because Christians are not common. We have a commonality of salvation, but uh, we're not common. The Bible describes us as a royal priesthood. Doesn't it? A holy nation, doesn't it? A peculiar people, doesn't it? A chosen generation, doesn't it? Uh, so, uh, we were not common in my language. I should strive to read all the books I can and educate myself. I should, I should strive to keep my mind alert and alive and pray that dementia will not take hold of me and exercise my mind so that dementia will not blot out the name of Jesus in my mind. You know, people get dementia and they don't even know about the church anymore. They don't even know about father and mother anymore. No, they don't even know where they are anymore. No, uh, they have dementia. Uh, and and they, don't, they, they can't remember the scriptures anymore. But I don't want to be that way. I believe God can save my mind. I believe God can quicken my mind. If I clean it up, I don't make it a trash dump, I don't make it a garbage heap, I don't make it a gossip pen. If I don't uh, adulterate myself as a woman with a man, and, uh, 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 and then as a, a man with a woman, if I don't let filth enter my body, if I don't let uh, uh, my, my body take drink and alcohol that destroys the mind, wine, beer, uh, I, I get that out of my house, I don't drink it, I don't, I don't smoke, I don't uh, put nicotine in my body, um, <laughs> I, I cleanse my body, I cleanse my temple uh, so this high God. And then I, I discipline my life, and I discipline the life of my family so that I don't just uh, slouch down behind a television and stay home, watch a television, watch a football game, a silly football game, uh, fellas running down the field, tackling one another. Uh, I, 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 I put my mind to better use than that. Yes. Uh, that that's about the level of, well, I don't know what the level is. Or glued your eyes to tell you, what's a guy knocking another guy down? I don't know what the level of intelligence that is. Uh, but, uh, you know, that uh, I, I, I train my mind. I, 
I don't just be a woman and be content to sit around the house and knit and purl and, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, try to read magazines and pick up uh, uh, People's Magazine and uh, another magazine and go through it. But I train myself to read the scriptures. I, I, I don't talk about people. I talk about God. Amen. See, I'm, I'm, a great people discuss God. Uh, common people discuss people. Uh, you know, but I, I raised myself up to where this high, holy God is a God that guides my every day, my every moment. I say, Lord, give me health in my body. Drive back disease. Keep arthritis out of my hands for I can read the scriptures. Uh, Lord, uh, 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 give, give me a strong mind. Let, let my eyes be keen. Let me be able to see. Uh, I, I began to pray about a year ago. Uh, Lord, uh, I know the doctor said I had macular degeneration uh, setting in. Uh, in my eyes about five years ago and began to give an eye supplement. And I began to pray, Lord, strengthen my eyes. I don't want to get to where I can't read the scriptures. And did you know I can read most of the scriptures now without glasses? Glory, glory. Here I am at the age I am in the Lord. Yeah. Is letting my eyes be where I can read the scriptures. Uh, I can read those scriptures without my glasses. Uh, you know, after this, Joel opened his mouth and, and cursed his day. I can read that uh, because I believe that we get what we ask for. Uh, the Bible said, ask and it shall be given. If you want a trashy life, if you want a sorry life, if you want a life that you're never hardly in church, you never hear the word hardly, you're never around God's people. You'll get that. Amen. You'll, you'll finally get that. You'll be where you're absent more than you're present. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're gone more than you're there. Uh, you, 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 you'll finally get to the place where you almost resent a minister correcting you or uh, teaching the word or preaching the word. And you, you'll begin to uh, find ways to resent that uh, because uh, your body and your mind will acclimate itself uh, to rebellion. But if you let God begin to deal with your life, God loves you. God wants to heal every bone in your body. God wants to heal. It's His will to heal your body. It's not His will for you to suffer forever uh, and with uh, affliction. Uh, God wants to deliver you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. It's His will for you to be healed. It's His will for you to be happy. It's His will for you to love God. It's His will for you to have energy. And uh, see, uh, so when we read these scriptures, that describes uh, Jesus, the seed of the woman. And then in Exodus, he's pictured as the angel yeah. of God's presence uh, going before Israel. Then in Leviticus, he's framed as the priest, uh, the high priest uh, of, of, of God's family. And uh, uh, in the book of Numbers, he's looked at as the rising morning star and uh, the lamb that was skipping upon the hills. Uh, and see, all the way through the Old Testament, Jesus was appearing. And then when we got into uh, the, uh, uh, in Deuteronomy, he's pictured as the second law, uh, the rock. He's termed the rock in the book of Deuteronomy. Seed in Genesis, the woman, rock in, in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, so all the way through those uh, Old Testament books, we can see Jesus behind the lattice work. Yeah. In the book of Proverbs, yeah. in the Song of Solomon, he's pictured as the lover of our soul, yeah. that hiding behind the lattice work, uh, that I sought him in the morning, and I cried out, where is the lover of my soul? My soul. Uh, the church has a high privilege tonight to worship an eternal God. Uh, we, we're, not, we're not here as poor people. This Christmas finds us richer than we've ever been. Amen. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Yeah. As we approach the Christ child uh, day of his birth, 
of Wednesday, and we'll be celebrating here Wednesday night in church. This church will be open Wednesday night for worship. Yes. Uh, we, we, we're richer than we've ever been. Yes, sir. I have a zeal in me that won't uh, quite accept. I, I've got to do something with the love of, that I feel for God. It isn't slipping away. My love is not going down. It's coming up. It's not slipping away. It's getting greater. The world with its charms just doesn't charm me. Not enough to go where they are. I'm going where he is. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going where my God is. Uh, so, so when we look at these books in the book of Psalms, uh, he's... He's the sweet psalmist of Israel. And so then to go to the prophets, and they really began to describe him, uh, as I said, Isaiah 7 and 14, then Isaiah 9 and 6. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. The way that he describes him, for unto us a child is born. Yes. Unto us a son is given. And the government, that is the order of God, that always accompanies the Christ, shall be upon his shoulder, shoulder being the twelve apostles, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, see the Bible outlines the plan of God. The Bible's an intelligent book yeah. for intelligent minds. The Bible can be understood by a fool. The Bible can be understood by a person that doesn't want to study. The Bible doesn't, it can be understood by, you say, it takes a smart mind to be an engineer. It takes a smart mind to study the Word of God and for God to talk to you. Yes. It, it takes an intelligent person for God to reason with you out of the Scriptures. Um, no, no, uh, look, the fool has said in his heart, Psalms 14 and 1 said, but the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I want you to know that my mother didn't raise a fool. I... Uh, I, I, my, my mother and father didn't raise a fool. Amen. I, I am not a fool. Uh, God has given me a mind to grasp the scriptures yes. and to grasp the understanding of the word of God. You're not a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. In other words, a foolish person will disregard the law of God Amen. and disregard the word of God yes. and disregard what God has said. Do you think I could read the Bible and know it like we do, and look into it, and worship with the church I do, and worship with the people of God that I am part of, and, and then uh, become uh, slow in my spirit, uh, ignore God in any way. You think I could do that? No. You, th you think I could backslide and go back in the world? You do not need to pray for Brother Marlowe that he will not backslide, that he, he will not backslide, that's a prayer that you can use with somebody that's weak in their spirit. But I, I know my God, my God gives us strength. Yes. Not boasting in ourselves, but boasting in Him. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. I said boasting in Him. Yes. See, it doesn't matter what people do or say or think. All right, people have been acting that way for 6,000 years. Yes. Why would I get worried about a person? They don't, they don't care. They don't like you. They, they, you're not number one with them anymore. They don't want to hear you preach. Well, where they don't, there's hundreds that do. Yes. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. Right. Where they don't, there's thousands that do. Yes. See, you, you can't look at the negative. Uh, it just looks like that God doesn't favor me anymore. Oh, yes, he does. Right. Don't say that again. Say, God highly favors me. Yes. God highly blesses me. Yes. No, don't say God doesn't favor me. Say God highly blesses me. God, God highly favors me. I've got a reason to praise him tonight. I've, I've got a reason to lift my hands and let's get real happy about it. Praise the name of the Lord. We didn't get happy in this church tonight. Praise our God. I, I've got a reason to lift my hands. I've got a reason to say God loves me. No, don't, don't, don't commit yourself to foolish words. Uh, that you, you've missed out. Well, I feel I've missed out. Never say that again. Say, I, I'm going now straighter than I'm ever going. I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to listen to the ministry. I'm going to listen to every word said. I'm going to study the scriptures. Ask God to give me dreams that are spiritual. Wake me up in the middle of the night and energize my soul. Uh, I, I'm, not, 
I'm not going down, I'm coming up. I, I, I am on the winning side. I found the answer. I found the answer. I am one of those peculiar people. I'm one of that chosen generation. I'm part of that royal priesthood. I'm part of that holy nation. Praise the name of the Lord. I am not a bum in the alley waiting for a handout or a hand up. I belong to God and I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of the mighty God. We need to reevaluate our, our thinking and uh, the way we express ourselves. And so look at that, look at the way he said that in, in Isaiah there, uh, 9 and 6. Let's go back to that. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and then his name. Oh, his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, bless that wonderful name. Praise God. His name. His name. Power is in his name. The name shall be called. Yes. Wonderful. 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 Counselor. Counselor. The mighty God. The mighty God is. The everlasting Father. The everlasting Father. It's a praise. Praise, praise God. Amen. His name. The Lord. And, and when you look at God's law and what a blessing it is. Uh, is that Psalms? Uh, run that quick on the screen. Psalms 19 and 7. Where the scripture said, but the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Yeah. Converting the, soul. Yeah. the testimony of the Lord is sure. sure. Making wise the simple. Right. See? Okay. You don't have to be a simpleton. Be a wise person. A wise woman buildeth up her house. Yeah. A wise church, Proverbs said, with her hands. But a foolish woman. Foolish church. Foolish and going away from God and not hearing God, not listening to God, not obeying God, not giving him uh, obedience, but a foolish woman plucking it down <coughs> with her hands. See, but a wise woman builds it up. And um, who can find a virtuous woman? Proverbs. Again, the church. Who can find a virtuous woman? Well, who can I hope you, you and I have. I believe we have. I, I know I have. I, I want to encourage you that you have. See, uh, uh, who, can, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. There's no jewel or diamond or ruby or pearl can compare with a wise church. No, sir. I know that you can apply that. You ladies can also to you individually. Certainly that's a, that's a dual scripture. Uh, who can find a virtuous woman? Then yes. uh, don't leave the men out. Who can find a virtuous man? Mm -hmm. uh, see, the, the same scripture applies to either male or female. Yes. And if you're applying it to man and woman. But if you're applying it to the church, who can find a, a virtuous or a goodness filled, a righteous church? Her price is for above rubies. I, well, I found in all of religion, the Lord let me find. The Lord led me to the body of Christ, to the church of the living God. Uh, God let me find the virtuous woman that only had one head, one husband. That, that, that's Christ. Amen. That's Christ. Um, I, I love the way Paul uh, said that in 2 Corinthians. Let me be sure I've got that right. And 2 Corinthians, um, is it, um, I'm having it here in just a moment. I, uh, Second Corinthians, um, no, it's not Second Corinthians ten. Um, yes, it's Second Corinthians eleven. Second Corinthians eleven. Um, yes. Would to God, verse one, you could bear with me a little in my folly. Now Paul was not foolish, but in case they thought he was, and indeed bear with me, 
for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you, I have espoused you to one husband. That makes the chaste woman. That makes the chaste virgin. Because Joseph did not know Mary, though he was married to her. Joseph kept Mary a virtuous woman. Christ is keeping the church a virtuous woman. Yeah. Even while the man-child, the bride of Christ, is being formed in the womb of the virgin church. Yes. Because her husband is keeping her yes. a virgin. Yes. Christ does not know the woman after the flesh. That's right, brother. And will not know a church in the flesh. No. And no assembly will ever know Jesus Christ if that assembly does not become a spiritual assembly. And that assembly stays in the flesh, lives in the flesh, indulges in the flesh. That assembly will be carnal and it will not know spiritual things. It takes a spiritual people. If a church is filled up mostly with foolish people. Ignorant people, uneducated people, people who break laws, people who gossip, people who spend their time idly, people that are tightwad, selfish, stingy, people that are given to anger real quickly, people that tear up things like a bull in a china shop, uh, people that don't study manners and courtesy, and know when to be soft, a soft answer turns away wrath, grievous words stir up anger, educate themselves in the Lord. That church will never know a level of spirituality. Right. Uh, but, but when a church becomes spiritual enough that they overcome the sins of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and it overcomes uh, uh, inaptitude toward God, to where faithfulness is not there, they're not faithful, uh, they're hit and miss, come and go, uh, uh, may be there, may not be there, might be in a place, might not be, I know I play a trumpet in a band, but I may be there to play it and I may not be. I know I play a saxophone, but I may be there and I may not be there. I, I know I'm a preacher, but I may be there and I may not be there. I know I'm one of the elders of the church, but I may be there and I may not be there. Uh, you, 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 you can't really depend on me. Uh, I, I, I might be there if, 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 if the right mood strikes me, if the right emotion strikes me, I might be there. But I'll, I'll make no sacrifice. I'll, I'll, I'll not push myself. I don't strain myself, I don't give myself, uh, you know, uh, that, see, that church will never, never be a virtuous church. And it won't grow because people will come to that church and they'll see the conduct level of the church and they won't want any part of it because they can find that in the world. They can find it in the world. They can find people that are sinful. They can find people that are dirty. They can find people that are trashy. You can find people that cheat, steal, lie in the world. Why would they come to the church and sing Amazing Grace when we can find a liar outside the church not singing Amazing Grace? Right. See, why would they do that? Uh, but but when, when a church becomes overcomers and they, they give themselves to being a peculiar people, to be the seed of the woman, like Christ, to, to be uh, with him as the angel of God's presence, to be the second law, as Deuteronomy is, uh, to be numbered in that number as numbers, and then uh, to be able to no, no, not be a fool, but be a part of a virtuous woman uh, that Christ is keeping a virgin. See, and the, the scripture said, Joseph, the husband of Mary, uh, knew not Mary until until right. she brought forth her firstborn. Yes. That, that man Joseph never spoiled the virginity of his wife Mary. No man, brother. He kept her. Yes, he did. His desires might have been as wild as a fire engine yeah. at midnight hour. Yeah. But he restrained himself. He didn't give himself to knowing her. He didn't know her right. after the flesh. Because she had something holy yes. in her womb. Yes. She had a man child in her womb. Yes. In the 12th chapter of Revelation, yes. I see another woman yes. clothed with the sun. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Right. Clothed with the New Testament. Right. The moon under her feet. Yes. The law under her feet. Yes. 
crown of twelve stars, twelve apostles upon her head. And she being pregnant with child was in travail and labor. And of course she was fought by the dragon, the angels, and the devil and his angels uh, in that travail. Uh, but, but she brought forth that man-child. The woman is to bring forth the man-child, complete. That which was in the early church and the remnant of her seed, Revelation 12, yes, sir. gives the same birth. Yes, sir. Um, it, it, it's over a 2,000-year period that the woman delivers all the seed yes. of the man-child. She delivers the seed uh, she delivered the seed of the man-child before she would, uh, fled into the wilderness and she'll deliver the remnant of her seed of the rest of the man-child down here yes, sir. at the advent of Christ yes, because this woman is going to deliver the seed that's in her yes. and a man will not know her Amen. and Christ will keep her yes, sir. as his virgin. Yes. Because there's going to be 144,000 virgins stand on the Mount Zion. Amen. In Revelation, the 14th chapter, praise the name of the Lord.